Welcome to our review on the nervous system. First thing we need to understand then is that there are two main parts of the nervous system. We've got the central nervous system or the CNS, which is made up of the brain and spinal cord. And then we've got the peripheral nervous system or PNS, which is made up of the nerves that run between our central nervous system, the effectors and the sense organs. Whenever we're talking about a receptor, then what we're actually talking about are cells that are specially adapted to detect stimuli. And we've got a variety of different receptor cells all over our body. So in our skin, we've got receptors that will detect pressure, temperature, touch and pain. In our tongue, we've got these receptors that will be able to detect different chemicals in food. In our nose, we've got receptors that detect the chemicals present in the air. In our eyes, we've got receptors that are going to be able to detect light. And in our ears, we've got these receptor cells that will be able to detect either sound or balance. Once these receptor cells have actually detected a stimulus, they generate an electrical impulse. And that impulse then travels from where the receptor is, along a neuron, which is a nerve cell, to the brain where that response will be coordinated. Now, what we find is that some of our responses are voluntary, which means we have conscious control over them, but other ones are involuntary, which means that they happen without us having to think about it. If we think about a reflex then, what we actually have here is the ability to respond to a potentially dangerous situation very quickly. And the reason it's such a fast response is that we don't actually have to think about it. So our brain isn't involved in this. The way that that response is coordinated is by the spinal cord. So what we end up with is this process called a reflex arc. And you can see at the bottom there, the little flow chart that shows you how it actually works. So the first thing that happens is you have a stimulus, which is obviously detected by the receptor. The receptor passes that impulse through a sensory neuron, which then goes through the relay neuron located in our actual spinal cord, through a motor neuron, back to the effector, which then brings about the response. So if we were to put that into context, if you happen to touch something that was very hot, so you put your hand in boiling water, for example, then Obviously, the temperature there would be the stimulus, as would the pain, and the receptors in your skin would detect that. They would then trigger an electrical impulse through the sensory neuron that would go up your arm to your spinal cord, where it would go through the relay neuron, sending the information back down a motor neuron to the muscles in your arm, which are the response, which is moving your hand away from something hot. Now, obviously, this has to occur in a very rapid space of time if we're going to avoid injury. So that's why we don't think about these consciously. They're all coordinated without us having to think. In the top diagram there, we start in a diagram form. So we've got a stimulus of a pinprick on the finger, pain receptors in the skin are stimulated. That then passes an impulse along the sensory neuron, which is the blue one, to the spinal cord, where it then crosses into the relay neuron, the purple one, and then it passes into the motor neuron, the green one, before traveling all the way back down to our muscle, which is the effector, which contracts to move our finger away from the pin. The second diagram we've got there at the bottom is a diagram of a neuron. So on the left hand end, you can see the cell body, which is found in our central nervous system, which has a nucleus. We've got that long part there, which is the axon, and that's the bit that actually carries the nerve impulse. And around the outside, it's got this insulating sheath around it to help speed up those impulses. And then at the very end, the, on the right-hand side, where it connects onto the effector, you can see that it spreads out in several branches. And that's so that that one neuron is going to stimulate more than one cell in our effector to bring about a larger response. So if we think about those neurons a little bit more, we know that they're adapted to carry out this particular function because they've got a few key features here. First one is that they're long, so we don't have to have lots of little junctions between them. Second one is they've got that insulating sheath, which helps those actual impulses transfer along that axon much faster. And as I said earlier, they've got these branched endings to communicate with many other cells or many other neurons with that one impulse. Now, between each of our neurons, we actually have a gap called a synapse. Now, what we find is our electrical signal can't actually jump that synapse. So we've got to have some other method of communicating from one neuron to the next. 
and the way we do that is by using a chemical neurotransmitter. So as the impulse comes to the end, what it does is it then stimulates the release of those chemical neurotransmitters from that side of the neuron, and then they're released into the synapse where they diffuse across before they're picked up on the neuron on the other side, and then when enough of that chemical neurotransmitter has been picked up, a new impulse is then fired along to the next one. We've mentioned these things called effectors, and quite simply we have a range of different effectors throughout our body, but they all have one thing in common, and that is they carry out a response to whatever the stimulus is. So the two one of them that you need to remember for your exam are the glands which release different chemicals and the muscles which will contract to move obviously a limb out of the way.